Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q1 FY23 earnings conference call of CDSL India hosted by Access Capital Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference has been recorded. Please note that CDSL does not provide specific revenue or uh, earnings guidance. Anything said on this call which reflects CDSL's outlook for the future or which could be constructed as forward-looking statement must be reviewed in conjunction with the risk that the company faces. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anshuman Singh from Access Capital Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you, Jacob. Uh, good morning, everyone. On behalf of Access Capital, a very warm welcome to the Q1 FY23 conference call of CDSL India Limited. We have the management team of CDSL uh, represented by Mr. Nehal Vora, MD and CEO, Mr. Girish Amesara, CFO, Mr. Sunil Alvarez, MD and CEO, CDSL Ventures, Mr. Ram Kumar, Chief of Business Development, Operations and New Projects, Mrs. Nena Ovelkar, Chief Regulatory Officer, Mr. Vinay Madan, Chief Risk Officer, uh, Mr. Swarup Kumar Goti, VP, and Mr. Nilesh Ketur, AVP. Uh, without further ado, I would hand over the floor to the management for their opening remarks, post which we can open the floor for Q&A. Uh, thank you, and Nihal, sir, over to you, sir. Uh, okay. Thank you, Anshuman. A very, a very good morning and welcome, everyone. I hope each one of you and your loved ones are safe and healthy. Thank you for joining us today to discuss CDSL's financial results for the first quarter of financial year 22-23. As in the previous quarters, we have posted a detailed financial presentation on our website for your reference. I'm joined by, my, by the CDSL Group's leadership team. We are happy to present the first quarter of the new financial year. Our primary focus in the first quarter of this year remained on maintaining an organic and sustainable growth and providing diversified services. Our services for DPs, investors, and other market participants bring on the promise of making it easier to access markets independently and improve the experience of all market participants. This is a result of being innovative and using technology to deliver a unique experience. During the quarter, the number of active companies with CDSL as on June 30th, 2022 stood at uh, about uh, stood at about 18,798, an increase of 12% increase from the number of active companies as on June 30th of 2021. Further, the value of the value of securities in DMAT custody with CDSL as on June 30th, 22, stood at about 33 lakh crores. This is an increase of about 6% in the value held as on June 30th, 21. CDSL added 55 lakh beneficiary owner accounts, taking the number of beneficiary accounts to 6.85 crores at the end of the quarter, with a market share of CDSL at about uh, uh, 71%, compared to 64% in Q1 of 21-22. The growth has been possible because of our focus on technology and CDSL's reach, which covers about 98% of the PIN codes in India, through over 20,000 700 service locations. Having said that, while the Indian securities market has increased remarkably over the past few years, only a small minority of the population, 7%, have DMAT accounts, signifying the great potential for expansion in this area. Simply put, India is a long way from being fully penetrated by the securities market, and a large portion of the population still uh, can have access to the securities market. We have been following this path for a long time, and our technology has been continuing, continually evolving to, the, to fit the needs of our various uh, uh, clients and uh, the investors. We are working with the regulator and various other market infrastructure institutions to build various platforms for all market participants. And we take a cue from the Honorable Prime Minister's speech earlier uh, this month during the launch of the Digital India platform. The, em the emphasis on, on technology will enable us to remain part of this transformation which India is witnessing. 
We aim to leverage our reach and continue a long-term strategy of investing in our technology infrastructure to ensure our investors and customers enjoy best-in-class experience and security while staying consistent with our values of being convenient, dependable, and secure. As India celebrates the 75th year of independence, while we find ourselves at a crossroad, a crossroad where the decision we make today will shape the future we build tomorrow. Further, reflect on our past efforts that we have spent years constructing this future that is defined by our steadfast commitment to a better India, our shared objective to empower every Indian through financial independence, and the opportunity to build a better economy for all Indians. Considering this, our long-term goal at CDSL is not only to grow individually, but to grow collectively as responsible contributors to the growth of our nation. We will also need to learn how to serve our nation in ways that are more effective to achieve the same CDSL as a market infrastructure institution will continue to deliver on our promise of making the securities market a convenient and secure place. Finally, I would like to thank I finally I would like to take this opportunity to thank all our stakeholders, regulators, investors, issuers, the registrar and transfer agents, depository participants, partners, associates, and employees who have played an extremely important role in the growth of our company. Now I request our CFO Shri Girish Amasera to take you through our financial performance. Thank you, Mel. Good morning to everyone. On a YOI performance, the consolidated total income for the quarter ended June 30, 2022 has increased by 16 crore, which is 12% increase to an amount of 145.49 crore compared to 129.79 crore for the quarter uh, June 2021. The net profit on a consolidated basis for the quarter is achieved at 57.61 crore as against net profit of 63.99 crore for June 2021. The total income on a standalone basis for the quarter ended June 22 has increased by 35.83 crore, which is 29% increase to an amount of 157.52 crore, as against 121.69 crore for the quarter June 2021. The net profit on a standalone basis for the quarter ended June 22 is at 89.10 crore, as against 73.30 crore for the quarter ended June 21. Now I shall request uh, Sri Sunil Alvaris to give an update about the operation of Holy One subsidiary, CD Ventures, uh, CDSL Ventures Limited. Thank you. Over to you, Sunil. Yeah, thanks, Kirish. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining this investor call of CDSL. Uh, so far as CDSL Ventures was concerned, uh, the operational is actually down by 2% as compared with Q1 FY22. Uh, the operational income in Q1 FY23 was 27.67 crores as compared to 28.11 crores in Q1 FY22. Other income took a substantial hit. Q1 uh, FY23 income was just 23 lakhs as against 2.74 crores in Q1 FY22. The total income was down by 10% uh, to 27.90 crores as against to 30.85 crores. The profit before tax was this finance, uh, this quarter was 1.4, sorry, 14.17 crores as compared to 18.84 crores last year. Uh, so far as uh, the uh, the core business is concerned, in terms of KYC creation, we added 30 lakh new KYC records as compared to 29.37 lakhs in, the, in Q1 FY22 taking the overall uh, KYC records to 4.61 4 crores as of uh, June 2022. Uh, so far as KYC fetch was concerned, there was a marginal drop by 6% in line with the total market conditions. In terms of KYC interrupt fetch, okay, it was higher by 42% uh, to 3,52,000 as compared to 2,44,000 last year. Uh, in the RTA space, we have added 30 companies, uh, taking the total number of companies to 870. Uh, similarly, uh, from GST filing, uh, we were higher by 14% uh, to at uh, 55 lakh, uh, for, sorry, at yeah, 55.48 lakh as compared to 48.86 lakh. Uh, with this, I open the floor for questions and we'll be very happy to take any questions from the investors. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Prakash Kapadia from Aniwed Portfolio Managers Private Limited. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. A uh, couple of questions from my end. Uh, Sunil, uh, if I look at the KYC business, the subsidiary business, you know, post two years, we've seen a 2% revenue decline. You mentioned in your opening remarks, you know, the addition, the fetches were less. So is the revenue decline due to some pricing mix or some, you know, competitive pressure or is it just uh, lesser uh, fetches from the mutual fund industry? If you could give us some sense. It is uh, it is a combination of all. There is a pricing com uh, uh, there is pricing pressure because of the competition as well as lesser prices. Because so far as the KYC business is concerned, uh, around uh, eighty percent of the income would come from prices. Yeah, okay. So because that volume is less, you are saying that affected the. Absolutely. And, and this KYC fetch would be the largest contributor to our uh, subsidiary business, right? Because Absolutely. the others are still relatively smaller. Yeah, they are in a very nascent stage, but we, uh, but they should. Uh, uh, to add to what Sunil is saying is Nehalia, yeah. there is that there is an overall market sentiment also. If you see in this quarter, there has been some muted uh, volumes uh, in, in the overall market picture. So obviously that kind of derives its uh, business from there. It is a function of the overall market uh, participation. Right. Uh, but near on the you know other side, the uh, depository segment has still grown 26%. I I couldn't get the PPT on the website or the uh, you know stock exchange filing. So if you could give us some sense of you know despite capital markets being volatile, despite, you know, the volumes, cash volumes being lower, what has uh, driven this uh, you know, revenue growth for us? Or or if, you know, Girish has the numbers handy in terms of the key revenue items that will give us more clarity. Yeah, so first of all, uh, the website, uh, CDSL website has the presentation. I just wanted to clarify that. Uh, I think uh, basically the NSC is uh, facing some issue in kind of up uploading. A team is in touch with the okay. NSC. Uh, second is uh, uh, CDSL as a function of two principal sources of revenue. One is uh, obviously the market related revenue, and second is uh, basically the annuity which we receive from companies. So uh, I think overall, uh, both of them, and also basically the IPOs and the corporate actions, etc., which is uh, in a way not directly related to markets, but it is connected to markets. So it's a function of both these that we, ch which are strictly directly related to the market volumes, and some which are kind of an annuity base, and that is why the culmination uh, of CDSL's uh, the revenue mix is a combination of both these factors and therefore that has led to a 28 percent increase okay and uh, you know on the employee cost there was a 10.86 crores payout to subsidiary so yeah what was that and to which subsidiary and was there some milestone to that and even if i you know exclude that from the base Employee costs are up almost 25-26%. So is it due to the annual bonuses and hikes which are captured in this quarter kind of a cost for employees? Yeah, it's basically it is not to subsidiaries. It is to the it is on account of the bonuses and the hikes which have happened. And we've had uh, it is linked to the financial performance of the previous year. So it's all linked as per what is our internal policy. So it's a 
uh, it's a fallout of uh, the bonuses and the increments based on the financial performance of last year. Okay, okay, understood. And and given that you know most of this is there in the base, uh, uh, the addition to employee cost would should be much lower, right? You know. Balance oh, it's a combination. We are even in an expansion mode. Uh, there are regulatory responsibilities which are also increasing, and a okay. uh, prime focus uh, as a MII is to ensure the regulatory responsibilities is of prime focus uh, uh, to ensure that the trust in the system is being built. Technology uh, also is our second focus. That whilst we build the technology, it's also the right key people. And uh, we've all seen that there have been huge amount of attrition all around, especially in the technology areas, but also in the other areas. So to get the right people, the right expertise, you need to ensure that uh, you are adequately compensating. Okay, understood. And lastly, you know, uh, the other income is fallen by more than 50 percent what would the m2m impact or the hit we would have taken because of rising interest rates if you could quantify girish yeah girish. so uh, if you compare our uh, quarter to quarter last quarter we had an uh, uh, m2m income of uh, investment income of uh, almost 11 crore this year we have closed at 4.75 so, so difference you can uh, consider as uh, m2m uh, hit understood I'll join back with you if I have more questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may enter star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Madhuka Ladda from Elara Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, good morning, uh, sir. Uh, I wanted to see the presentation is not available on the CDSL website. I've been uh, trying uh, to tell it, but it's just not there. Uh, can I get the revenue breakup uh, in terms of annual issue charges, transaction charges, and IPO and online data charges for the quarter? That'd be helpful. Uh, second, uh, you know, one thing I wanted to understand uh, that the standalone net profit is about 89 crores and the consolidated net profit is at about uh, uh, 57.6 uh, crores. I can see that there's nine crores of loss from associates uh, coming in. Uh, so that would still mean a difference of about uh, 23 crores. So, uh, uh, which is a negative item. So, uh, so is the subsidiary sort of contributing uh, a, a negative uh, amount of about 20 crores? Is that right? So, one is, uh, I'll ask Girish to answer that. Uh, there has been some, but anyway, the website, a CDSL website has, I've got it confirmed from my team. It is obviously, if you refresh your website, if uh, the presentation is there on the CDSL website. I'll just ask Girish to answer that. So first to answer uh, uh, your question on the uh, candle loan profit, we, in this quarter, we have received dividend of, uh, dividend from our subsidiary, CDSL Ventures Limited of uh, 41 crore. That's the reason standalone loan profits are higher and uh, this dividend get eliminated on consolidation. So consolidated right, profit is right. over. And uh, understood that explains it, yeah. Yeah, answering your uh, uh, breakup of income, uh, we have achieved annual issuer income of uh, 45.23 crore in this quarter, transaction charge of 40.81 crore, uh, KRA uh, uh, KYC charges at 22.54 crore, IPO corporate action income of 14, 14 crore, uh, cash income of 4.5 crore. E voting income of 2.84 crore. This breakup covers almost 90% of our operating income. Understood. I just got the presentation right now on the website. I'll just go through it and if I have any questions, I'll come back and you. Thank you. Thank you. 
The next question is from the line of Sanket Goda from Swag Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, 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 thank, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so we see that the annual issue charges uh, uh, has substantially increased in the current quarter to almost 45 crores, uh, which, which last year in every quarter was in the range of 28 to 29 crores. Uh, so so, so just, just wanted to understand what led to this uh, growth uh, and, and, and how do we see this uh, uh, number to play out for subsequent quarters. So it should broadly remain in the same range uh, going ahead to. So this is uh, more... Uh linked to uh, the overall newer companies getting added to the fold, also the newer investors coming into the fold. It's a combination of this, uh, which kind of uh, has led to an increase in the annual issuer fee. And uh, so the reply to that is this. Okay, so given, given it is more sticky or annuity in nature, so, so this number should, should remain uh, soon for, for subsequent years, also, subsequent quarters too, for the year, because the billing, billing probably happens at the start of the year. Yeah, we don't give any future. Uh, okay, okay. okay, sir. Uh, but, so can, can we get this breakup of 45 crores? Uh, I think we have given that numbers in the past too, uh, and broken down into, uh, into, uh, into listed and unlisted companies. Uh, one minute, I'll ask Girish to give So, uh, income from unlisted uh, company is 1.47 crore in this quarter. Okay, okay. And, and sir, uh, one more data keeping point. Uh, uh, I believe you said the, uh, the transaction income was closer to uh, 40.8 crores. Uh, so, so uh, uh, again, I uh, just, just wanted to understand uh, how, how pledge is behaving, uh, pledge income is behaving. Uh, compared to compared to the numbers what we have delivered in the past, so so, so uh, to the extent I remember, it it is close, it was closer to four crores in, in last quarter. So so, so uh, can we get a similar number in the current quarter, sir? So income from pledge is 3.41 crore in this quarter. Okay, perfect. I, and uh, and uh, and just just again again on the same question uh, uh, on the employed cost. Uh, even even if you lock off the one-time performance bonus kind of thing, uh, still still uh, uh, that number at around 150 crores uh, seems to be seems to be higher compared to compared to the last uh, sorry 15 crores uh, seems to be higher compared to quarterly run rate of 2 to 13 crores what we paid in for, uh, previous four quarters. So even if I adjust for the inflation and all those things, uh, it seems to be still on the higher side. Uh, so, so, so this, this project to understand is that uh, uh, that, uh, that, that it, 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 uh, employee growth is more because of the new initiatives, or are the, uh, the the hikes have been uh, very strong because of the very really strong last few years? Uh, that, that, how, how do we read these numbers basically? So it is the we need to understand that CDSL is on a growth trajectory, and two principal costs are technology and employees. So we need the right people and we need to expand our employee teams to kind of garner and able to uh, achieve the increased growth to, on a sustainable basis, both from a business standpoint, a technology standpoint, an operation standpoint, and lastly, but most importantly, from a compliance standpoint, the regulatory standpoint. So it is... Uh, I think what is important to state is that as the revenue is growing, the employee costs will also have to kind of uh, think, think in some in some form or the other to ensure that it is able to uh, basically sustain uh, the growth is expected. Got it, sir. Uh, uh, finally, can you can you give data provision costs? That's it for my question. Hmm. Well, what do you want the data point? Uh, data provision costs. 3.41 3 crore. 3.41 crore. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ravin Kurwa from ICIC Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my question is related to employee cost only. So, what will be the quarterly land under which we can expect going forward? And uh, for some sense on F24 also. And secondly, uh, our other expenditure have also risen sharply. So if you can help us to understand, you know, which line item has led to the increase in the cost. Thanks. 
So the future run rate, we don't give any uh, future guidance. So that I'll have to kind of pass. That's for you to kind of judge. Uh, I have uh, given you very transparently uh, the reason uh, why this has led to an increase, and it is in sync uh, in terms of the overall performance of the company. In terms of the other expenses, I'll ask Girish to uh, give the breakdown. So, uh, first, employee cost has increased by 13.91 crore. Depreciation has increased by 2.5 crore. Debtors provision has increased by 75 lakhs. Uh, technology cost has increased by uh, 3.22 crore. So, automotive, all this, uh, uh, if you look at these numbers, uh, this gives the breakup of the incremental cost that we have incurred in this quarter. Yes, thanks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Santosh Kumar Keshri from Keshri Wealth. Please go ahead. Hello, Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity. Uh, I just wanted to ask you uh, two questions. One is that uh, about uh, uh, RTA, Sunil said that there are 80, 837 companies that uh, CDS Group is serving uh, in terms of RTA. So if you can give a sense of revenue that is there and the profitability, and where do we stand in the market touching order of, among RTA companies? Do we stand in top five, top 10? If you can give that. And after that, uh, I'll come to the second question. See, so far as the RTA business is concerned, right now we are focusing only on the unlisted companies. So to that extent, we will not be able to benchmark ourselves as within the top five or top ten because we are not handling any, uh, you know, listed public company. And uh, typically the RTA revenue is about uh, about one crore per annum. Oh, okay. So it's very less. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So any reason that we are focusing only on unlisted companies, like we have such an expertise in uh, serving uh, larger market participants, bigger companies, we have all the technology where we do. So we can serve as well the bigger companies and be a better service provider in the marketplace, be more trusted. So any reason that we are limiting ourselves only to unlisted companies? Yeah, because you need a very specialized uh, team for this and it is uh, in terms of the graduated approach which we are trying to achieve that our principal form of business and within CVL is of the KYC registering agency and also serving basically the unlisted space. Uh, so we want to ensure that our core competence remains there. And uh, as Sunil mentioned, the RTA business is also uh, a very specialized business. So as we gain the traction and experience, we may think about it in future. But as of now, our focus remains here. Okay, okay. And lastly, my second question. Uh, had there been no special bonus to employees uh, in the current quarter, what would have been the hike in the income cost, if you can give me that number? We don't uh, generally disclose uh, the internal workings uh, if on a basically what if analysis. This has actually happened, so what is the actual truth is what. And anyway, bonuses are payable at the end of the financial year, every year. And it is a function of the financial performance of the company. Okay. So uh, just one more thing here. So is this something that is paid to all the employees across the board, or it is given only to the senior management? It is uh, given to all the employees. Okay, okay. That makes it very clear. Thank you, Neil. Thank you so much. Wish you all good luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratiksha, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, Neil, I just want to ask. Uh, so, as we all know that uh, we have recently launched uh, our India's first Indian exchange. So, uh, just want to ask, like, uh, is there any role for CDSL in that? And uh, can we expect some revenue from this current quarter once the operation starts? Yeah, I think that's a very good question. Uh, 
CDSL was as a pioneer uh, in terms of uh, setting up the depository at Gift City, uh, but in line with the overall ecosystem, a uh, consortium of uh, BSC, NSC, MCX, NSDL, CDSL was formed to own the gold ecosystem, which comprises of the exchange, clearing corporation, and the depository. Uh, now, therefore, the CDSL IFSC has been sold uh, to that consortium. CDSL is now a part of a 20% owner, an equal and 20% owner of the entire consortium. Uh, so it owns the entire ecosystem. And therefore, uh, again, this is kind of a future guidance, so I'll kind of refrain from saying whether what will happen in future. But the expectation and the intent behind is that uh, we contribute to the entire ecosystem rather than only the depository space in the Gibbs City, which is a new and upcoming area, which was recently inaugurated by the Honorable Prime Minister. So like CDS will definitely play a major role uh, in this uh, bullion exchange and other operations, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, yeah, good luck for the future, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Madhuka Ladda from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for taking my question again. Uh, so if I look at the online data charges, which is mainly uh, the CVL business, that is down on a QoQ basis from about 31 crores to 23 crores. I think partly it is, uh, you know, lower fetches. Uh, what are the fetch numbers? I think you had said it in the opening remarks, but, you know, uh, there were too many numbers, so I missed that. And how much has that dropped, uh, you know, year over year and uh, quarter over quarter? And I believe there's also, uh, you know, some pricing pressure, and uh, competing technologies as well in the KYC uh, space. So can you elaborate a little bit on that uh, in terms of uh, what are the kind of pricing pressure that we are seeing and, uh, and uh, with some, some sort of narrative around how the business is evolving over there, that will be helpful. I asked Sunil to answer that. Yeah, so in Q1 FY23, the number of fetches was 16.58 lakhs. As compared in Q1 FY22, it was 17.06 lakh. So if I compare this financial quarter to last year's financial quarter, it is down by about 6%. Uh, typically, uh, if you see the uh, overall DMAT and broking accounts in the last quarter have been down. So since our business is intrinsically linked to the number of DMAT and broking accounts opened, obviously the number of fetches have gone down. But the number of records created have been higher uh, by about 5%. Uh, so far as the uh, business is concerned, uh, the SEBI has recently come up with the KYC amended regulation where uh, the KYC, the KRAs would be playing a larger role in terms of, uh, you know, validating, etc. KYC record. So, uh, considering this, uh, we are here to stay. And uh, uh, maybe uh, what what would that larger role entail? Can you uh, describe that a little bit more in detail? So it's, uh, I will uh, take that question. Uh, it's in overall is a market infrastructure institution ecosystem, and KRA is uh, is a part of that entire ecosystem. So uh, this is in line with the building the entire ecosystem where. Uh, as to kind of ensure a higher financial uh, inclusion at the same time convenience and security to be enhanced at a centralized level. So as more and more participants are expected to join the fold of the securities market, that is supposed to be a part of that entire story. So, Got it. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepan from Trustline. Please go ahead. Good morning, everyone, and thanks a lot for the opportunity. 
So, firstly, wanted to uh, understand about the annual issuer charges. Uh, so, the increase, as you mentioned, was due to higher uh, companies' addition. So, can you please mention uh, what kind of uh, company additions happened during uh, past quarter? So, uh, initially, we are told that uh, the increase in annual issuer income is a combination of increase in the investor account okay so it's a kind of a consolidated uh, thing of uh, the number of companies as well as uh, the number of investors as of now we don't uh, disclose the number of companies which have been added uh, in terms of uh, the annual issue so you okay, okay. as a consolidated number. Okay, okay, sure. Sir. And uh, uh, the price increase in annual issuer uh, charges uh, business has been due for a long time. So are we in discussion with the B and uh, is it expected any time uh, sooner? Uh, yeah, I mean, it is overall in terms of uh, this will be have to be a joint initiative, both the depositories. So... Um, there are numerous things uh, which are happening simultaneously, so that we will see as the year progresses as to how it's to be handled. Okay, okay, okay. So other than uh, Gift City, so any update on other uh, newer businesses, what we are uh, working on? There is a gold uh, spot exchange in the local market also, which the circular has been issued. So CDSL is very much a part of that entire ecosystem. Okay, sir. Thank you, Anand. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please limit your questions to two per participant. The next question is from the line of Abhay, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, just two questions. One, uh, the absolute 10.96 close of... Uh, 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 payment to employees. Do we envisage uh, any payments in any other quarter in this uh, year, sir, as of date? Oh, the, there is going to be the employee cost every quarter, right? The salary cost which happens every day and every yeah. month. No, but in addition to this, I mean, this 10.96 is a sort of an annual uh, uh, in, uh, special payment or, or bonus or whatever. So yeah, do we envisage so looking at... No. Normally, that is paid uh, at uh, the end of the financial year. Uh, so, uh, in terms of, uh, as of now, it will go as per what uh, is the routine salary cost. And then, based on the performance, it is a uh, performance appraisal done at the end of the year. Yeah. Uh, so, these costs were not very high in the first quarter of last year. So, as you were saying, uh, a reason is that uh, your annual performance has been very good in the last two years. Therefore, the amount is uh, uh, the amounts are large, and obviously there's attrition. Uh, so, what is it based on? Is it based on uh, annual profit growth, or is it based on annual uh, absolute level of profit in a year? What is the uh, uh, basis of payment based on, sir? It's a combination of various factors of financial performance, profitability, also how is the growth scene and uh, it is uh, steady as laid down under its regulations as to how compensation on the broad schemes it needs to be construed and done. So it's uh, completely in compliance with those broad factors which have been put in place. Okay, so just as a guideline, do we take this 11 crores paid in the first quarter of this year to be some sort of a benchmark and assume similar payments in future first quarters? We don't uh, give any future guidance, so I am okay. not able to answer that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ravin Kurwa from ICS Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, my one more question was in the transaction revenue which we have built in the quarter, what will be the flood income related to the Yes, 3.40 crore. 3.40 crore. What will be the last quarter? 
those three point uh, uh, you are asking last quarter means march or you are asking june june na huh? 3.23 march 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 or something around that only 3.23 so sir is there any slowdown in the pledge which we are seeing a post q1 fy23 because markets are peaked out in march or something like that or no so post that are we seeing any reduction in pledges which is which are being taken place right now i think the numbers are for there for you to see so you can make okay. a calculation with it so now i am asking post q1 fy23 and that's i'm saying that you will have to see the numbers of the first quarter and compare it with the previous quarter uh in terms of uh, whether there is a slowdown so we don't give any future guidance so you will have to kind of uh, see it in that uh, particular spirit and sir uh, what will be the total number of pledges if you can help us with those numbers we generally don't uh, provide these numbers it's a consolidated value in terms of that revenue which is given out thank you the next question is from the line of amit chandra from icdf securities please go ahead uh yeah hi sir and thank you for the opportunity so my question is on the technology spend so you know you mentioned that uh, there is uh, increased focus on enhancing the technology and uh, you know, we have increased the investment significantly there or the on on the technology so is there any specific areas you know, where we are trying to spend or we are trying to upgrade or you know increase the capacity uh, and uh, you know you know uh, Where we can see, you know, the technology spend uh, flattening, or uh, you know, maybe some like projects are still remaining, or in or in the process. So I just want to sense that, you know, where we can see the technology spend stabilizing. Uh, so there is a it's a continuous process of basically evolution because regulation is also getting evolved with newer products, newer processes, newer controls in place. Uh, we are building a sustainable long-term solution so that. uh it is flexible enough to kind of incorporate all these changes both from a regulatory standpoint and also from a business standpoint make it more and more easy as well as efficient for the customers to kind of access the markets so it will be uh, difficult to segregate between what is new and what is old but it is kind of making the entire technology system more robust as well as more flexible and nimble to kind of cater to the uh uh changing requirements both from a regulation standpoint as well as from a business standpoint uh so it's a continuous process of uh, uh kind of reviewing our technology needs and trying to bring in line with whatever is the uh sophisticated uh, technology uh systems of the world okay and so you know if you can provide this you know the total number of employees that we have in the standard entity and uh, you know uh, you know this one uh to the ventures limited and how that number of employees uh, you know employees have increased over the last few years see as of now uh, as on june quarter we had the count is 250 and uh, in march we had a count of 246 Okay. Last year June the count was around 119. Okay. 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 Thank you. And sir, in terms of the new initiatives, uh, you know, mostly on the insurance to policy side and the commodity policy side, what is the progress? Uh, you know, any any like new developments here you can highlight? Oh, so we are kind of uh, ready with our. systems in terms of the commodities you are talking about uh, the gold spot no. right no no so uh, on the commodity repository limited the crl and cir yeah so that continues to evolve i think there is some changes in the act which are pending with the honorable parliament uh, but we are continuously in evolving ourselves to uh, be in sync with whatever are the changing requirements uh, and uh, as soon as that act is passed uh, then that will kind of change the entire way of doing things significantly okay 
and in terms of revenue contribution how much is insurance repository is on really contributing can i uh, provide that number please? yeah it is uh, i last girish it is not significant as of now but i last girish it is less than 1% oh no, sir in the uh, no uh, no in the other sources of revenue like the like e voting which was and agm which was uh, no particular you are talking about e voting yeah okay e voting uh, income is 2.84 crore in this quarter okay and uh, so uh, you know in terms of the agms also you know because of the last year it was covid year so you know the virtual agms were uh, you know uh, like preferred so in this year we can see you know like drop in that revenue uh, if we can quantify what was the contribution of agm revenue in 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 the last year uh, you know, numbers why why uh, if we can get that you voting in agm as of now as of now i think there is an uh, option given for holding the meetings through vcs so we don't see uh, we'll have to, we'll, we'll have to wait and see as to how it culminates uh, by 38 uh, september thank you mr chandra may we request you to return to the question queue for any follow up questions The next question is from the line of Kunal Thanvi from Banyan Tree Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Two questions. Uh, one, uh, the first one uh, was a bookkeeping one. If you can help us with the cash uh, business revenue for this quarter, uh, and second was uh, was on you know our transaction uh, you know income. So if we look at the overall cash volumes in the market and the settlement volumes. uh there has been a sharp fall in last two three months looking at the market situation however when we look at cbs's transaction income the fall has been uh, you know not that bad like uh, comparatively it has been resilient uh, uh so uh, what should one read into it is it because of the uh, you know rise in the uh, pledge business or, or you know or any other factor that played in 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 that respect if you can help me us with that thanks The first question I'll give is to answer. So cash income is four and a half crore in this quarter. Sure. And the second question, uh, yeah, you know, is a is the reply to that would be that it's a combination. It's a lot of the newer investors coming, and I think uh, the delivery based volume is what has uh, been there. It's a combination of your pledge, repledge, the delivery based volumes. uh which constitutes the transaction charges the entire way of doing things is uh, significantly been modified uh so there are multiple legs which are there in the entire uh, market uh, cycle so you'll have to see that in that uh, sense so your uh, initial remarks that this pledge replay that's part of it but it's also delivery based volumes etc and the newer people coming in which is leading to a higher level of delivery based volumes sure no so when even if i look at the delivery based volume right uh, which is the settlement volume uh, that sebi gives on their at they on their website uh, the fall for this you know particular quarter for uh, both depositories has been very high like if i look at even uh, the cdsl the fall has been around 36% on a qoq basis whereas when we look at the revenues uh, for transaction income the fall is 22% for cbs right on a qoq basis so uh, the differential is like quite uh, large so is it uh, like apart from the is a pledge repledge uh, system i think uh, that would be one of the principal factors there are other uh, ancillary factors but this is one of the sure got it and uh, last one if i can excuse is on the annual issue charge sorry i joined the call late uh, so you can help us understand you know the sharp increase in the annual issue charge is uh, uh, have about more number of companies you know getting at it but when i look at our you know last four five quarters number uh, you know we can figure out that uh, the, the addition has been there for a while now like we have been adding a decent number of companies every quarter uh, what has changed in this quarter particularly both on a qoq and a yry basis because the jump has been very sharp like is it that 
building cycle comes in the quarter and then this number is that how should one read into it yeah so the billing normally happens in the first quarter of every year so you should look at it from that perspective and uh, quantum is a function uh, you joined late this question was asked earlier so we've already replied to this as a function of newer companies joining and number of newer uh, investors which have also joined the ecosystem the combination of that which leads to uh, leads to the increase in the annual fee issue sure so there is no impact of pricing as a part it is just the uh, volume that's right. that have had that's right that's right okay. okay thanks nehal and all the best for for thank you thanks thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen please limit your question to one per participant the next question is from the line of narendra purwal an individual investor please go ahead hello namaskar sir meri awaaz aa rahi hai sir ha bilkul sir mera question aisa tha ki hum jab apna मंथ एंड होता है तो अपने जो कस्टमर्स होते हैं नंबर ऑफ डिपोजिटरी कितने अकाउंट्स इस साल इस महीने में खुले हैं उसकी लिस्ट हम तीन चार दिन लेट देते हैं हर बार और जबकि सारी ऑटो कंपनियां जो होती है वो फर्स्ट तारीख को दे देती है आज भी हो गया आपकी वेबसाइट पे भी अपडेट नहीं होता है और एन एस साइट पे भी अपना नहीं आता है सर टेक्नोलॉजी के टाइम में हम क्यों ऐसा करते हैं क्योंकि तीस जून को हमारे तीस जुलाई को जो हमारे जो तीस जून को जो नंबर कस्टमर्स थे वो छह करोड़ पिचासी लाख थे अब इस महीने कितने एड हुए हैं तो वो हमें कल पता पड़ेगा या तीन तारीख को पता पड़ेगा हमारा अनाउंसमेंट हमेशा दो या तीन दिन लेट आता है सर तो आप ऐसा टेक्नोलॉजी अपने पास इतनी है तो आप ये सिस्टम से अलाउ किए और एक्सचेंज में हर मंथली मंथ एंड होते ही आपको एक अनाउंसमेंट दीजिए कितने नंबर ऑफ कस्टमर्स हमारे एड हुए हैं इस मंथ में ये हमारे लिए एक बहुत अच्छी चीज है सर ये हमारे तौर पर सी पे हम इमीजिएटली दे देते हैं सर मैं सर मैंने वेबसाइट अभी भी खोली हुई है सर नहीं है अपडेट होता तो सर मैं आपको क्वेश्चन नहीं पूछता मैं वहीं से हर मंथली चेकअप करता हूँ सर आप आप मुझे बोले देंगे तो मैं आपको आंसर कर पाऊंगा मैं आपको ये बोलना चाह रहा हूँ वॉट आई एम ट्राइंग टू टेल यू इज दैट वॉट एवर इज एंड ऑफ द मंथ नंबर दैट ओनली कम्स ऑन द फर्स्ट ऑफ ईच मंथ वी डोंट अपडेट ऑन अ डेली बेसिस दैट इज द स्टैंडर्ड ऑपरेटिंग प्रोसीजर and that is followed by both the nsdl and cdsl uh cdsl has been extremely prompt in ensuring that its numbers are always put out on the first of the month without fail so if you are facing some issue or you want to see where then you can send us an email we'll send you link etc where you need to look at it thank you we move to the next question the next question is on the line of anub biswa an individual investor please go ahead thank you sir mm, for giving me the opportunity mm, i also joined late mm, i am questioning on the issue of charge annual issue of charge so ye jo um, annual issue of charge uh, sir abhi uh, 11 rupees pass ho gaya hai so um, aapne last quarter bhi bola tha ki सेबी के पास दो एक्सचेंज हम लोग जाते हैं उसके बाद ये होता है तो अब आपका थिंकिंग क्या है सर नहीं थिंकिंग यही है कि दिस विल हैव टू बी अ जॉइंट प्रपोजल हैज टू बी अप्रूव्ड बाय सेबी एंड जनरली द ओवरऑल ट्रेंड इज नॉट टू इंक्रीज द चार्जेस ऑल ओवर but however okay. it is in line with whatever is basically the inflation etc yes sir so see the sebi will take its own call as to what has to take into consideration all the conditions of the market before it really proposes it we have to wait the last yes sir last last in piece uh, in the 1995 nahi 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 2000 2000 2015 2015 yes yes sir okay thank you thank you very much sir thank you Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratiksha, an individual investor. Please go ahead. From uh, taking my question again. So, Neil sir, uh, in the at the end of last quarter, we have declared a fifteen uh, rupees dividend, right? So, is this the sixty percent of operating profit, uh, operating profit as we have a uh, fixed dividend policy? So, just want to confirmation on that. Yeah, it is. 
I'll ask Girish Khan. It is uh, it is sixty percent of the net profit, and it would be paid after uh, the shareholders approved it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, just on the previous question, I've just got an update from my team that uh, some days the numbers are getting updated by second or third also some on some of the days. Uh, that is basically the process of internal reconciliation sometimes is done. So uh, we will uh, try to move towards coming on the first. So thank you for pointing it out. Thank you. In the interest of time, that was the last question. I would now like to hand the conference back over to the management for closing remarks. No, I just wanted to uh, uh, Ensure that all of you remain safe, uh, continue to remain safe. Uh, there are a lot of health hazards which keep on seeing as news. So ensure that your family remains safe and secure. And our intent of uh, CDSL is to ensure that we continuously build India as a new kind of an ecosystem and want to partner in the growth of the entire ecosystem. That's been our focus from a technology standpoint. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Access Capital Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.